Introducing God's Learning Channel's brand new Amazon Bookstore, your gateway to a world of wisdom and faith. Our Amazon Bookstore offers a remarkable collection of dozens of hand-picked items, carefully curated to enrich your spiritual journey. From a wide selection of traditional Christian and Jewish Bibles, to Judaica treasures, biblical holiday merchandise, and even beautiful jewelry. Our Amazon Bookstore has it all. Conveniently shop from the comfort of your own home at any time. Just visit our website or stop by our online bookstore. Or better yet, simply find us on Amazon to embark on a transformative shopping experience. New items are added regularly, so remember to always check back. Shop now and embrace the blessings that await you. Hi friends, we at GLC would like to take a quick moment to thank you for watching our programs on this platform. And we'd like to ask you for a little favor. Would you please go beneath this video and click the subscribe button? Did you know that by simply subscribing to the GLC YouTube channel, you can help us financially support the programs on this platform? You'll need to be signed into YouTube beforehand. But if not, simply click the subscribe button and YouTube will automatically walk you through the steps to sign in or to create an account. By taking these simple steps, you will not only ensure that you continue to receive our unique programming and gain instant access to the hundreds of videos we post, but more importantly, you'll also be telling YouTube that GLC's content is worth watching and promoting. Likewise, if you enjoyed a specific program, please click the thumbs up button below, which also helps inform YouTube that this is a program worth recommending. Finally, once you have logged in and subscribed, Please click the notification bell below in order to receive announcements when we post new content. As usual, feel free to post your questions and comments in the comments section below. We always love hearing from our friends and viewers. Again, thank you for watching and supporting God's Learning Channel. We couldn't spread the message of the gospel without you. Be blessed, and we hope you enjoy the show. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to God's Learning Channel, and welcome back to our show, Light of the Southwest. Holly and I are so excited to have you joining us today. Um, remember that uh, we are streaming on YouTube, so please, if you haven't already, like and subscribe the channel. Uh, make sure that when you, when you actually subscribe, what happens is that you will get a notification when a new episode comes out, and we just don't want you to miss anything that's coming. We have such an exciting uh, program for you today. So, Holly. Thank you all so much for joining us. Shalom. We are so blessed and honored to be here today. The Father orchestrates our footsteps in beautiful and unexpected ways. And at the close of Sukkot, uh, here we are today visiting with um, very special guests. Uh, Rise of Fire Ministries, uh, the Van Der Vestheisen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have Petey and Christina Van Der Vestheisen. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, guys, for having us. It's such an honor to be here with you. Yes. And all the way from, we're in from Chattanooga, Tennessee, and now we're all the way here in Texas with you. Wow, joining us in studio. Thank you. It's yeah. an honor to be here. It's yeah. very special. Petey. Did we get the name of your ministry right? Rise on Fire Ministries. Rise on Fire Ministries. And, and, and I guess just take a minute. Tell us, um, tell us, like, if somebody wants to take a look at your ministry, do you have a website? Tell us your website, and then, uh, and then we'll uh, open us in prayer if you could. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you can find out more about us on riseonfire.com. And uh, we also have a YouTube channel where we're putting out multiple videos every week. You can just find us at Rise on Fire on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So yes, I'd love to open a prayer for us here. Thank you. Uh, Father, I just thank you so much for just this time we can spend together, Lord, to just speak about you, your Holy Spirit, your truth. And Father, I pray, Lord, that you would come and everyone who's listening, every heart is listening, and you would prepare their hearts for the message that you have for them here today. Lord, let it be freedom unto them in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, so we we all just finished uh, keeping Sukkot. It was so amazing uh, to to see the wonderful things in in the Torah and in the feast. You yourself 
are uh, Torah observant Christians. Is that right? Yes, I, we love Yeshua, right, Jesus, and we also see the beauty that he has given us in his biblical feast days. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, we absolutely love celebrating them, always keeping him at the forefront and seeing Amen. him. That's Amen. right. That's right. It's more than just a tradition and food. It is Messiah. And he's wanting ultimately to teach us through, through his word, through the experience. He reveals more. I know he's revealed and downloaded a, a lot to you. Um, and so we're, we're just so excited to see what the Lord is doing through you and your, your wife and your ministry and what the message he's laid on your heart for our audience. Um, I can tell when we, when we, when we were just kind of talking, I can uh, feel, feel the love and the spirit that he has and, and with you and your, and your, and your wife. And, um, and it's, it's cool to see the, the youthfulness and the fire that you have. You, you guys do a ministry to children too. Yeah. Well, yes, our focus is pretty wide because I think the message, and I think we're about to get into it, but, yeah. but the message the father's really put on our heart, I think is really for this time. And it's for, it's for all people, mm -hmm. uh, young and old, because mm -hmm. what is the prophecy that's been given for that end times in Acts mm -hmm. chapter two, he mm -hmm. says, old men, young men, daughters, sons, right? They are going to prophesy. Yeah. They are going to have dreams. They're going to have visions. The Holy Spirit is going to move on all. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're looking forward to seeing the Father doing this time. Awesome. Amen. So Amen. before we get to the heart of it, can we get a little background mm. on you and yeah. your ministry? What Maybe your testimony. I would love to hear a brief testimony from both of you. Mm -hmm. I can share briefly, uh, briefly first. Wonderful. So I grew up in a normal church up until about age seven. And then one day my mom was reading Leviticus 23 and she came across these festivals and she asked the father, Father, can I keep these Jewish feasts too? You know, we thought they were only limited to those who were Jewish, but the father said, no, these are my appointed times. And they all point to my son. And so we started our journey of how do we keep these? And we found a Messianic synagogue and I attended um, there for a number of years. I had my bat mitzvah there. I learned Hebrew, Hebrew dance. It was a wonderful time. And we learned about the Shabbat and all these beautiful aspects of his Torah, our father's Torah that points to Yeshua. And of course, I continued growing and learning. But there was something that I hadn't quite yet seen. And that was the book of Acts. There's these things that are talked about, the people who are being prayed over and they're getting healed and the life of Yeshua in that way. I hadn't quite fully seen that side, but that's where my husband can pop in with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I myself, I grew up Dutch Reformed in South Africa, uh, hence the strange accent. <laughs> and uh, uh, as I was there, uh, you know, I grew up, you know, mm -hmm. learning about Jesus, being introduced. I was growing, I was at that privilege to know about him early. Um, but then I cried out to the Father because I saw all these denominations around me. And I was just a young boy and I asked that simple question of, well, Father, which way do I go? Like, how do I know which one is the right path? And then he came to me and said, PD, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. And so I just focused all my attention on him, not necessarily just on like, not like on a church or a denomination, but on him and, and looking at him for who he is. And, and I started seeing things that he did. Mm -hmm. and, and, and some of like what she just mentioned, you know, he kept the Sabbath day holy mm -hmm. and he healed people on it. He made it a point to make it a day of freedom. Mm -hmm. So it was a beautiful thing for him. And, you know, the feast days, he went to the feast days. He celebrated mm -hmm. the feast days. We see Paul do that as well later. Mm -hmm. So I started, we, my family, we started discovering all these as the Father reveals it. And I go, I grow. And, and, and ultimately, I, again, I come to a similar place where, where really where she was. And, and I'm reading the book of Acts. And I'm reading about not just what Yeshua, what Jesus did, right? But I'm reading about what his <laughs> disciples continued mm. to do and what the early church did. And really, if you think about it, the thing that made that early church ministry so revolutionary, flipping the whole world upside down, and that was the Holy Spirit. That was mm. the, the one that Yeshua said, it's good that I go so I may send the Holy Spirit to empower you, clothe you with power from on high, so that you can do the things I have done and greater things than mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's what I started seeing and crying out for. Mm -hmm. I think to uh, reiterate the feast days that 
uh, Yeshua kept them. The yes. disciples kept them. Uh, you talk about the Holy Spirit. And, you know, for those who aren't familiar, that Shavuot is spe- a very specific feast day mm-hmm. that believers were commanded to go to Jerusalem to observe. So when Yeshua told his disciples to go to Jerusalem, and 10 days later he would send the helper, mm-hmm. uh, they were going in fulfillment of what the Torah said to go for Shavuot. And they were obeying what Yeshua said as well. And so when the Holy Spirit comes down on Shavuot, it's a fulfillment of that feast day that for all of those years prior, Israel was rehearsing the giving of the Holy Spirit. (laughs) Yeah, I've heard it said, hey, did you know that the first Pentecostals are all Jewish? <laughs> and I was like, hey, this is an interesting point. Never thought about that before, but yeah, that is so cool. It is, it is, it is amazing to watch uh, Yeshua and his disciples and the healing that comes forth through the Spirit. Um, and what you're trying to say is like, yeah, you know, this is today, now, and are you walking in it? Yeah, absolutely. Are you walking in the spirit? Absolutely. And, and I think that's what a lot of people are, are wrestling with. You know, they're they're saying, you know, is this something in the past? Is this something for the future? Uh-huh. Or is this uh-huh. something for now? Uh-huh. You know, and, and yeah. if we if we have come to the conclusion that we are we always talk about the end time, we love that. And you know, look at the world, look at what's happening in Israel yes. even now. Let's yes. pray for the peace yeah. of Jerusalem. Amen. Yes. yes. Um but as we talk about the end is near and he's, his coming is near, then we mm-hmm. should be seeing what he said would happen in the end. And one of those things is the Acts to Shavuot prophecy that Peter quotes from Joel, that he is going to be doing miracles through his people. Mm-hmm. So we should be looking for that sign of the end mm-hmm. times. Amen. I'm not just looking for it, but seeing what role do I play? In How that? can I take part? Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Oh, I, I was... I've seen like um, in the end times, they say there's going to be this rise of a per- the persecution on the church. And I think we, we look and we think, oh, well, that's, that's not really happening. Well, in the Western mindset, we feel like it's not here. But, um, but we see persecution rising, all, the persecuted church all over the world. Mm-hmm. It's happening now. Yes. And so the spirit is happening now. Also, as we see evil rise, holiness must rise to to combat it, right? And we see evil at its, it's so bad, PD. Like television, they're after our children, they're after our our minds. It's coming to you through the phone. And how does the spirit rise to beat this thing? And and you're seeing some amazing things. Tell us more. Yeah, I'll, I'll pick up like where I kind of left off my mm-hmm. story there because mm-hmm. I, as a young man studying at the University of Pretoria in South Africa, I'm there and I'm and I'm thinking, God, I don't see anyone around me mm-hmm. walking out what I see in the Bible, like in the Book of Acts, and I'm like, but God, I need to see this because I believe the Word is true for me today, mm-hmm. and so I'm praying, I'm praying, and, and God gives me a dream and He shows me I'm standing in the streets of Jerusalem, and there's a man, a, a, a little boy, who's with me. And I'm showing him and to pray for this little girl, and she gets healed in her shoulder, mm-hmm. brings her Jewish mom, and I'm sharing with the Jewish mom, this was Yeshua who did this. And I wake up, and I'm like, I've never seen that. That's strange to me. And I pray and fast about it because I feel like Father's showing me something. The next weekend, I'm sitting at home working, and the Father, I just hear, well, here, I have a thought. I, th- I think it's my own, but it's go to Hatfield Square. There's someone you need to meet. And I'm like, what? Why am I thinking this? And it doesn't leave me, right? And I, and I get in my car. I drive. I'm shaking my head. I get out of my car. I'm opening the door. And there's a man who walks right up to me. And he says to me, um, you know, he's, he's homeless. He's struggling. He starts telling me his story. And all I can see is his shoulder. And there's nothing wrong, like, with his shoulder. It's not hanging. It's not weird. But there's something that's just attracting me to his shoulder. That's all I, how I could explain it. And he's talking. I'm like, hold on, sir. Is there anything wrong with your shoulder? And he looks at me for a moment strange and he says, yeah, I, I can't lift it like past year. It hurts me so much. And I'm like, and in a moment, I'm like, okay, what's going on? 
and, I, and, I, and something just slips out of my mouth, and I say, I believe that Jesus is going to heal you right now. Can I pray for you? And I'm a shy, I, 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 like, I was really a shy person, afraid of people. So this was huge. My heart's beating, and, mm. and I just lay my hand on his shoulder, and I say, in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, I command the shoulder to be made whole now. Amen. With that authority that we see him pray in the scriptures with and his disciples pray with. I see that and I pray that way. And suddenly um, I ask him, can you just feel? And so he lifts his arm and he says, he's very careful, he's very careful. He's, he says, it doesn't hurt anymore. Like, and, he, and, and I'm, I'm like, are you, are you sure? <laughs> right. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. I'm is like, this real? I'm like, I'm is like, this real? I'm like, I'm like, is this real? And then he turns around, he runs, and he brings his, his other friend who, who's got a leg issue. And he says, pray for my friend's leg. Mm. And so I pray for his leg. And the father heals his leg. Hallelujah. And I'm like, and this is, I've never seen any of this before. I'm just a kid. I, I'm not anything. Mm. But I cried out for him to Amen. use me. And that's what he did. And that changed my life. Amen. Right? Amen. Yeah. Wow. You said yes. <laughs> the, the, the power of God, if you can say yes. Yes. And I think Psalm 37 talks about delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. I used to look at that as, oh, the things I want. If I just trust in him, he'll give me those things. But now I see it completely different that he as I delight myself in him, he puts desires in my heart that he will fulfill. And this desire he put in your heart to see him, yes. he was waiting for you to voice that so that he could fulfill that. How beautiful. What was important is what the father spoke to you in the car afterwards. Yes. Uh, well, on the way home, I'm crying myself home yeah. at this point because I, I can't believe it. And the Holy Spirit, I could just explain from... That, that, that's mm -hmm. the first time like really I could say I heard him and he said to me PD this is not about you mm -hmm. this is for my bride and mm -hmm. I desire for her to walk in it and mm -hmm. so the message is that that story even is not really about me it's Amen. about us it's about the body and how God desires to call us into the spiritual gifts of the spirit that he wants to use us in. Because mm -hmm. it's all part of the Great Commission. We know Yeshua, his final last words, he can say, were go out into all the world, make disciples, baptize, right? And we know when he comes back, what's the first thing he's going to ask? Have you been doing this? Mm -hmm. And the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, walking in the Holy Spirit as mm -hmm. Yeshua did, that is paramount to being able to fulfill this Great Commission. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know he, Yeshua tells so many par parables and... Um, you know the master who leaves, and what are what are they doing while they're while right. he's gone? And it's like, yeah, I know we get we get distracted and we get we get focused on the negative. Uh, we lose hope. Uh, I myself have struggled in you know with depression at times, and and it's just about um, stop being in your own head and start following me, say yes. And that voice, when PD, when you said, you know, there's this voice and it just told you to go do this. And you're like, what? I've had this voice. And, and um, uh, we, were, we were young. And if, if I, I can tell you just a quick story about what I've experienced. So the Lord was like, hey, you're gonna go on this missions trip. It leaves on Friday and it's Monday. <laughs> like kind of a deal, right? And like I go to the, the pastor, I said, hey, the Lord told me I'm supposed to go on this missions trip. And he's like, well, how do you, how are you, we've been raising money for months to send each one. You, if you can come up with the money by Friday, I guess you can go, right? And that was the first struggle is look past the hurdle and just believe, say yes and go do it, right? And he, he provided the money, and then the next hurdle was, I'm in the military. How do I get the time off to go? And so I went to my base commander. My base commander says, oh, it's a, there's this humanitarian effort. You can go and I'm not going to give you, you don't have to use any of the leave uh, or, or have to use any of my personal leave. He's going to give it to me to go off uh, so for on this mission. So he answers that prayer. And we get there, and there's a uh, there's a series of other struggles that go along with this. But there's 
eventually there's a man that I meet uh, and the Lord says, go pray for the healing of this man who is blind. This, the, I'm telling you, I struggled as soon as I heard the voice because I'm like, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> My flesh doesn't want to go do that. And I don't want to be, uh, you. Uh, I don't want anyone to think that, um, you know, that I, I can do this, which I can't. Right. I'm like, this voice is telling me, go do it. And it's, it's not a voice, it's the Holy Spirit. And he's saying, you, you've trusted me this far. Can you do it a little bit more? Step out I finally, I, I went around. I was with 15 other people. I said, do, the Lord's asked me to go pray for the rest- restoration of this man's sight. Will you go with me? Mm-hmm. And then nobody wanted to help. Nobody wanted to go with me because they weren't oh. called. I was called. <clears throat> and I can't pass that on. Mm-hmm. I don't think, I think maybe you, we all are called. But if you don't step up, mm-hmm. like, who uh, who's gonna do it? He's giving you a gift of faith in that moment. So yeah, you need yeah. to obey that. Amen. That's right. God is saying, "Who will go? Who will I send?" Will you say, "Hanani, here I am. Send me. I Amen. will go." Yeah, I will go. I finally obeyed and prayed for this man, and nothing immediately happened in my experience. But I felt a sense of peace. At least that I did it right. The voice gave me a sense of peace, and I was like, "I did it, Father." And and um. At the man lived in a can- he lived in a t- uh, canyon. He was a Tarahumara Indian, and he lived inside of a canyon in a cave. And so he walked off that night into the dark. He's blind. He knows where he's going, and he right. knows where he lives. <laughs> right. But it was like 2 a.m. in the morning. I get woken up. 15 flashlights in my face going, Eric, wake up, wake up, wake up. Uh-huh. And the flashlights pan, and there's, there's the man. His name was Cornelio. And Cornelio was there. His eyes were clear. Oh, he could wow. see. And glory he was looking at me with tears. And we said, glory to God, gloria a Dios. And wow. I, I, I saw a man with Amen. his blind eyes be healed, and just like he said, you know, you will do these things and greater. Yeah. And we know Yeshua healed the blind. And just to see that that power is with us today. Yes. If you can obey. Yes. And I don't know what he's calling you to do. Uh, I know he's talking to you. And we ignore it. And if you haven't learned to tune into that voice, how, how do you teach, how, how do, what do you tell people to tune into that voice? I don't know. Yeah, you know, what I would, I would encourage people to do is really go and look at the spiritual gifts. Because, mm. you know, we've talked about healing now, but that's just one. That's one. Mm. And, and the body, there are many gifts mm. that the Father wants to use us in. And so, you know, there's a gift of healing, right? There's a gift of prophecy. There's yes. words of knowledge. Like Yeshua spoke to that Samaritan woman about all the husbands that she's mm. had. And he was not supposed to know that. And it opened mm. his doors. And you've, you've got the gift of wisdom, right? You've got the gift of discernment. You know, there are people who are called to really cast out demons like Philip did in Samaria mm-hmm. as he went there. Uh, you know, and so whatever it is that the Father calls us to, you know, we should look right. at those, that, that list that the Father gives us in the scriptures and be like, Father, where do you call me? What, what is the first gift that I can really pursue mm-hmm. and pray about it? And that, and that desire, like you said earlier, it says in the scriptures, the carnal mind is that enmity. Mm-hmm. with the Spirit. So when we desire a spiritual gift, that is the Spirit in us, Holy Spirit in us, that desires that. Yes. And so we should then pursue that because the Father desires to give it. But I think a lot of people, they're waiting. Mm. And they're really going to be waiting forever until they step out because faith means doing something. Okay. It's not just believing, you know, in my mind, but it's doing, acting on that and so if you feel like, I want to, I want to see this sick, the sick healed, mm. then go and pray for, find sick people to pray for. Mm. You know, if you feel like you want to, you want to have, uh, give words of knowledge to people, well, then go and start praying and asking the Father for words. And when you feel like he's giving something to you, go and give it. Mm. And remember, and this is one last thing I'll say is, is many people think about mm. the Holy Spirit and gifts uh, that he wants to use us and as, mm. as something that just like comes upon us and we're like mature Mm-hmm. And we're like perfect in it, but it's something we have to grow in, mm-hmm. just like anything in the world. 
we learn to recognize his voice more and more. Mm -hmm. We learn to to step into greater aspects of faith more mm -hmm. and more, you mm -hmm. know. And so that when we go in humility, like you did, you know, great humility, and you walk it out in humility, then there's so much grace. And so even if we make a mistake in that learning process, which we all make mistakes, mm -hmm. right, then the Father picks us up with that grace. And we then, how, let, me, let me ask you this. How will you know what his voice doesn't sound like? If you've always, if, if you've never made a mistake, mm. right? Uh, uh. Like if you've never acted it on something that you thought was his voice, but it actually was yours, mm -hmm. uh, and you got it wrong, then you can be like, "Wow, God, that's what your voice doesn't sound." <laughs> like, and that's valuable. Yeah, right? That's actually valuable because yeah. then the next time it's like, "Well, that's what his voice doesn't sound like," but now I'm a little closer to what it does sound like because mm. I can't teach you, like you can't teach me, mm. what his voice sounds like. Right. We can teach the word and. But but when it's that still small voice, that's right. It's something that's experienced. Yes. Mm. Your own relationship with the Father, mm -hmm. and He has so much grace on us as we step out in obedience and humility and love. And the Father has so much grace and mercy on us. I mean, like we have grace and mercy on our children when we tell them to do something, and they maybe don't do it perfectly the first time. That's okay, but they're trying. They're stepping out, and each time as they do it, they get a little better and a little better. And we just love that as you know, parents. Same for our Father, our Heavenly Father. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to recognize that mercy that He has on us because sometimes I think people are so scared. Mm -hmm. Right? It's the fear that really keeps us from stepping into because it's it's sometimes it feels scary. Like, yeah. Like you. you yeah. No. I, with yeah. your situation and me too. My heart yeah. was beating. I was scared. Mm -hmm. We have all these thoughts of mm -hmm. what if it doesn't happen? You're mm -hmm. gonna make God look bad. But, mm -hmm. but if God was so cons if He why would He ask mm -hmm. us to do something that's gonna make Him look bad? Right. This was exactly the same thing I had. I was like, I remember the enmity, like you said, enmity between the flesh and the spirit. The moment the voice is telling me to do something, it, Yeshua's spirit is saying, you need to go pray for this person. My flesh says no. Like, I don't want to do it. I'm scared. I don't want to look foolish. But who are we? And then, so, and then our friends around us, when I go to ask other people, who wants to go with me? They're like, well, what if... What if God doesn't do? Yeah. And then, you know, what are you saying about him, right? He, he now then has this opportunity to be, is he the God that heals or is he the God that doesn't heal? And it's like, I can't change. I'm not the one healing. It's not me. Nope. It's not you prophesying. It's not, but um, he will defend himself, right? Absolutely. Exactly. And, and this is what I'll add. You know, I've prayed for people who didn't get healed, right? And so when that happens, I'll, I'll tell you this, though. I've never seen it where I prayed for someone and, you know, what I wanted to happen mm. didn't happen. Mm. And that person is like, oh, I mm. can't believe it. No, they are shocked that you have the faith to believe that your God can do such a thing. Mm. You know, one day I was speaking with a lady at a market, actually, in, in Texas market. And... And she, was, she didn't know anything really about the Messiah at all. She grew up in a non-religious home. And, and I just asked her, hey, is there anything wrong with your uh, body, like a, a, an issue? And she said, she, I believe she had an issue, an injury, a sports injury. And I just said, can I pray for you? And she said, yeah, sure. So I prayed for her. She couldn't test it out because it like comes and goes. So that's something that she mm. could not say mm. God healed. But she, she looked at me with wide eyes <laughs> and she's like, who is your God? Like, who do you believe in? Mm -hmm. Like, and, and I had the opportunity to share the yeah. gospel, to share Jesus with her. And she was so interested because obviously I put myself out there mm -hmm. to actually believe that you he would do such a thing. loving kindness to her that and, love. and showing that loving kindness. So even if they're not a believer, you praying is an act of love and kindness. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the Holy Spirit, and by the way, last thing I'll say, the Holy Spirit, even no matter what we want to see, the Holy Spirit comes and touches that person, and He He reveals Himself to them. So, yeah. no, that's not the last thing you're going to say. We're going to keep you talking. Uh, <laughs> no, yes, correction. <laughs> no, this is this is so amazing. Um, we have there is a young lady, young girl in our congregation. Um, and one day she's in her special needs class at school and she sees her classmate um, having a seizure in a wheelchair, having a seizure. And 
um, in her very simple faith, she says, what's going on, right? And the teacher's like, please go sit down. You know, we're trying to deal with this young man who's having a seizure. Um, and this is pretty recent in our congregation. <laughs> and this young woman, uh, young, young girl, goes up to the, the, the boy and says, in the name of Yeshua, be healed, and touched him on the head. Immediately, the young man stops having a seizure. The teacher says, who are you? And what was that name you just said? Oh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and for the audience, you know, of course, this is uh, Jesus, a Hebrew name. Uh, and, uh, and it's through this simple faith mm. that she just went. Well, it doesn't stop there. He stopped having the seizure. He goes home the next day. He comes back into class walking, oh, wow. no longer in a wheelchair, what? and That's and they are still like, um, I'm just like everybody needs to know this story. I'm so <laughs> glad I get to tell it because you yeah. sparked it in my in my in my mind to tell it. But like, um, this is today, yes. and the spirit is being poured out even more. Tell us about like you know. Because it's like we think that this is a end, in you know, like, on, is there going to be a revival of the spirit mm-hmm. in these times, mm-hmm. you know? And are you? Uh, uh, is there? Is it happening? I think it is. We're um, seeing it happen. We're seeing Amen. it happen, Absolutely. and you're seeing it happen. Absolutely, uh, you know. And here's the thing: some people would say, maybe someone while listening to this, and they're like, "Well, I'm not seeing it happen." Mm-hmm. And you know, and this is this is I want to hit home with this: is that that this is a really a call for believers. When Yeshua, you know, ascended, you know, what is the purpose of his ascension? Mm-hmm. Because he could have, as they expected, mm-hmm. you know, the disciples, they expected that he would just sit up his kingdom right there and then, rule from Jerusalem, and that's that. But he ascends, and, he, and they're shocked by that. Why are you going? Why are you leaving us? And he says, it's okay. I'm seeing the Comforter, the Holy Spirit be with you, but I must ascend for that to happen so that you can be empowered by him and continue what I have done now through all of my people, becoming temples, bringing the spirit into the world to people so they can encounter the Messiah. And so that means that my purpose here, your purpose, like each of our purposes Mm. here is to be a temple and is to continue what Yeshua did in the flesh. And if we don't do that, and we can only do that by the spirit, not by our own abilities, If we don't do that, we're really missing a huge part of why he died. Mm. Because he died, many, we we know why he died. He died for our sins. Mm. But that's half of it. Because when he was pierced, blood came out for the remission of sins, out of his side. Mm -hmm. But water also came out. Which we know, and at the Feast of Tabernacles, he stood up and said, If you come, if you're thirsty and you drink of me, there will come a living water out of you too. Mm. And he said this about the Spirit. Mm. So Mm. he was pierced. So the Spirit may be poured out upon mm. us now, making Amen. us clean for that. Mm. So that means that if we, we don't step in and allow the Spirit to move like a river through us, then He is not going to. And so it is dependent upon our circles, our denomination, our church. Um, and so that means that we have, like I, I was a little bu- a guy, there's no one around me, but I saw it and I went after it in that desire. And then He he heard my cry. Yeah. And that's what we need to. That's right. Yeah. If, I, I, I truly believe if you, if you are sitting in a, in a church and that says, we don't do that. Guess what? You don't do that. <laughs> like, and and, and it, because you're not asking, you're not seeking and you, and you don't have the belief to break through those walls. Um, so he will use those who have an open hand and who say, use me. If your hands close and you're said, I, I don't do that, right. then I, I don't. Then you don't. Right. You have to say yes, yeah. and you have to come to the table. You have to take steps and go towards it. Right. Absolutely. And and let me say that we are all very concerned about our youth, right? Yes. yes. We're concerned about what what's happening. How mm-hmm. many of them are falling away? Mm-hmm. We're, we're believing, mm-hmm. grew up in believing households, and this is what they need because they are tired of hypocrisy that they have seen in the church. Amen. And they're looking for an authenticity, which can only come by the spirit of authenticity, the Holy Spirit of God. And this is what we are seeing. Like we, this year, 
Uh, me and my wife had the honor of going to some youth camps. And we just, I, I, told, I told her afterwards, I have not seen the Holy Spirit move. <laughs> In my life, the, the magnitude of way that he has moved to these camps because wow. the children are coming forward, you know, teenagers, yes. with childlike faith, and they're just coming forward. They heard the word. They're walking forward, and they're saying, I have this, I have that, and they're getting healed. They're getting delivered. Praise the Lord. In, mom, in a moment like that, just like that. And their peers see it. Their peers saw the, the brace the, on the leg for the whole week, and then that weekend comes, and it comes off. And it's like, how do you explain that? You cannot. And that is what they need to see because mm -hmm. now they encounter. Mm -hmm. um, He's real. We start praying over each other as well. We see groups Praise of teenagers praying for each other. And it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Share about that one uh, gentleman who, who said, I've just been watching all of this. Oh, yeah, shame. As Pity was praying and other people were praying over some of these teenagers that were coming forward, there was this one fellow, he's probably about 15, 16, who was just sitting on the side just watching everything, very quiet, very silent. But at the end, as uh, the crowd was starting to disperse a bit, he came up to Petey, just his face, just in, in shock and surprise and just wonder, like, I've, he said, I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. And I've never felt such peace just sitting here, just mm. watching this. And it was just that moment of, you know, he experienced God's presence, mm. God's love for his peers and for him as well. And mm. this is what God is calling all of us to, mm. to be doorways of his love. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I I got to serve at a camp at a camp uh, last year, and um, while I was with the children, they sang these songs. They were so instrumental. They were music like the music talent in this generation was amazing, and I just heard them singing. And as I heard them singing, it's like I saw in the spirit, like the throne room. And it's just like, this generation is special. Mm. They are being attacked so heavily because of how special they are. And I'm just like, wow, it's, it's cool that you guys are, so, are, are ministering to the children. We have five, but we have five kids. Uh, uh, and our oldest being 16, our youngest being seven. And, um, and, and we're, you know, I, I would say if we are afraid, we're not afraid. We're not afraid and fearful. We understand who God is and, and, and we will fight against the principalities, but we understand that the electronics and we, this generation, we are probably the most advertised to programmed. I mean, we open a can of soda and like an endorphin goes off in our head that says, oh, sugar, right? Like, um, how do you beat that? And the spirit and the gifts that Yeshua can break through all that yes. and show and reveal himself and make himself real to this generation. And I think you're right. You're absolutely right. They're hungry for truth. And, and sometimes we're not given it. We're not, we're the ones who aren't teaching our, our, as parents, are we teaching them that, that, you know, that he, he can heal. He's the answer for yeah. everything. Um, are we, and are we walking as an example? Today? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, what, what reminded me of, you know, what you just said is, is in the scriptures when Israel is in bondage to Pharaoh and Egypt mm -hmm. and, you know, and even before that, you know, just as Moses is coming on the scene, we see that Pharaoh is going after all the babies, right? And he's throwing them to the alligators and mm. he's throwing them to the rivers. And, and so that is a spiritual assault. Of, uh, obviously, it's a spiritual war on something that was coming on the scene that God was doing. Mm -hmm. So what was that? Moses was the one whom God was birthing into the world to mm -hmm. ultimately lead Israel out of the mm -hmm. bondage of Egypt. And what if this generation is really trying to be thrown into the river mm -hmm. by the principalities of today mm -hmm. because something is being birthed into this world, that God mm -hmm. is doing something. And what if it's not a, just a Moses, but what if it is many babies being born for a time like this mm -hmm. to lead God's people out of Egypt, out of the world, to a place where they can 
worship him to a place that is ultimately then the promised land. Mm. And if you think now about what Moses did, how Moses did it, he obviously on, the, on that path received the Torah, God's instructions, and that's beautiful. But before that, he demonstrated God's wonders to Pharaoh, to Egypt, to Israel, a mixed multitude. And that's what caused them to see this God of Israel, I want to follow him. And then they came to Mount Sinai receiving the truth. Uh-huh. So sometimes I think we've, we've proclaimed the truth, the, the, the commandments, which are holy, righteous, and good. But we have not shown the love of God and demonstrated his wonders, drawing them out of Egypt mm-hmm. to a place where they are ready to receive yeah. that mm-hmm. from Mount Sinai. Mm-hmm. Amen. Right. It makes me go back. I think of a Taurus. Uh, it's uh, Deuteronomy. Oh, I'm going to get the ver- chapter wrong. Don't let me get the address right. <laughs> okay, so he said, it says, um, it talks about the false prophet in Deuteronomy. And what does it look like, right? And it's like, um, it's like they will do signs and wonders. And when these signs and wonders come to pass, we still need to go. We need to put this against the word of God. So, I mean, just to say, hey, signs and wonders are a, are a sign that get your attention. But then we must listen to the words, right? Because yes. if they're teaching you to not do, the, to keep the words of this books of Moses, right? If they teach you not to do that, then we know he's a false prophet. Um, and so Mashiach comes and he does the signs and wonders but he also he tells you to keep the words of this book, right? Yeah. And he doesn't tell you, I, I did that and it's gone. We don't need to do that anymore. Right. Had he done that, he would have disqualified himself as Mashiach, right? So there it says in our last days, there's going to be many false messiahs to come, right? There's going to be all these who say, oh, he's over here, he's over there. And so when we go around and we, as the body, are doing the signs and wonders, we also must couple that with keep his word, yes. put them back into the Bible. Yes. And then that's, that's it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, cause that's the litmus test that right. it's like, uh, I think there's a lot of, we, we say, you know, the healing is mm-hmm. denominational, right? Right. Mm-hmm. There, there seems to be one denomination that mm-hmm. goes out and they're, and they're trying to do and, and they are. And a lot, I think a lot of healings come from, from these ministries. But are we turning to the book? Are we turning to the Messiah? Or are we turning to the person who's doing the work? Because it was fun. It's not the work. It's not you who's doing the work, but it's him who's in us, right? right. So that means I will, lead, I will lead others then to him and his word Mm -hmm. and teach Mm -hmm. them. And that's that's what the the Father's doing. So we've been talking about the Holy Spirit a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's wonderful. And and I love what you're bringing in now because Mm -hmm. the restoration that I believe he's doing in the world is not just uh, another charismatic movement, Mm -hmm. which that that can be beautiful, but it's a spirit truth Mm -hmm. movement. Mm -hmm. It is the worshippers of spirit and truth. Both. We We have people who are really on far and passionate about the the word and teaching it properly, understanding it properly, right? And but not one at the cost of the other, and open to the Holy Spirit and allowing the Holy Spirit to move. And that's something that I think you know has really been slowly coming and growing. It's something that was in the first century we see on a large scale, but then through the through, through the ages, much of that has kind of been. Uh, uh, has been between denominations. And we've right. kind of missed each other. Like this denomination has something right here. This one has something right there. <laughs> and, but we, do, we kind of don't agree on other things. And then we kind of miss the big picture of what God has given us. And maybe that's a call to unity. Yes. Maybe that's a, I need to learn something from you. And you need to learn something from me. And then there is a, we can be brothers in Christ together. And we can iron sharpen iron. Yes. Yeah. It's the, it's the house of Judah, the house of Israel mm. in, in unity. You talked about the Samaritan woman. Yes. T- tell me more. Yeah. Well, I love that because I think that moment when Yeshua, Jesus, he's with, at, the, at the well, right? And the Samaritan woman is there. And, you know, he's not allowed to speak to her, right? Because she's a Samaritan. And there's a lot of racial tension, a lot of religious tension, a lot of… Uh, sure tension between these nations. 
and she's a woman too. We, I mean, that, there's that as well. That's a cultural thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. cultural issue. So, so he's breaking a lot of barriers in that moment. But, but not only that, he, he's having a theological a discussion with her, mm-hmm. right? Because she's talking about, you know, this is the place, right? He's, <laughs> she's asking him, right? Where should we worship? Right? Where should the temple ultimately be, this place of worship? And Yeshua says, there's coming a time when it won't be on this mountain or that mountain, Mount Gerizim or this or that place, but my father's calling worshipers of spirit and truth. And so, mm. and that really reveals the heart and the purpose of the Messiah, where, where he is building temples in his people, where they are going to go into, and they're going to, God is building a temple in Walmart. <laughs> God is building a temple in the classroom where that child was and prayed. Wherever or, you or go. Or in the caves where you, where you went. Mm-hmm. Like that is where the temple of God, because that is where God, where people will then encounter him and come and find his spirit and truth. But we have to manifest. We have to be a temple of spirit and truth, worship in spirit and truth. Mm-hmm. All right, the truth of God's word from beginning to end and the Holy Spirit walking as Yeshua walked in all the ways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I never really thought of that story like that. I mean, kind of like understanding that there is a time when that the second century temple and, and was going to be destroyed. And so... Her, the, the question is sort of obsolete. You know, that's what you, I that's never thought said. about exactly. it like that. Exactly. It's like the question is like, well. You didn't the, answer the question. Yeah, no, no. Really. That was interesting. It's not that it's not an important question. Yeah. But, but he knew that there was a change that was coming. Yeah. I've seen people take the angles of like, you know, um, she's worshiping, like, well, Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal. Of course, we know that they pronounced the blessings and the cursings on these two. Uh, But there was never really a commandment to stay here because it's sort of like they got stuck. Like I always felt like they got stuck. Well, you should have just kept following. I don't know why you stayed at this mountain, you know. And um, but then were were the Samaritans attacked by the lions or? Well, the history of the Samaritans, right, is that they were people from the nations that Nebuchadnezzar brought in to that area to replace the children that were taken into exile. And because they weren't worshiping Hashem in truth, they were serving other idols, um, they were vulnerable because they're in Hashem's land. Uh, they were vulnerable and lions were coming Remember the in the lions and were killing attacking them. them. Yeah. And the only way uh, to solve that was for them to go and find a Levitical priest and find how to worship Hashem in truth. Mm -hmm. And when they were shown how to do that, the lion attacks ceased. And that's part of the history of the Samaritans. Mm -hmm. So they they have an encounter with God. Yeah, I mean, if you think what happens then is, right, he tells the Samaritan woman about all of her, you know, many husbands. Husbands. And the one you're with now is not your husband, he says. And and she, by that word of knowledge, which is a spiritual gift. Right. So that's worship in spirit right there. Mm -hmm. And he being the truth, the mm-hmm. Messiah, she goes as a woman and she becomes that first evangelist to Samaria. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she says, you know, he has arrived. He told me all these things about my life. He wasn't mm-hmm. supposed Messiah to know. Is here. He's, he's here. And so what does that tell us? That spirit and truth worship breaks down all of the cultural barriers, mm-hmm. all of the, whatever, whether it's racial, whether it's gender, because all of it was all, sure. all the issues you can think about really was being, go, going, he was going after that right there. And so when we worship in spirit and truth, we don't have to worry about all of these barriers Mm. that we may have between people. If we worship in spirit and truth, God will take care of that because the love of God is greater than all. Yeah. I know when you encounter, when we encounter people uh, who believe in our God, who walk in the spirit, it's like you, you can feel it, you sense it, you know it, like, like, I knew it when I saw you, I was like, oh, you know, this, this is family. Uh, and I think that when we encounter cultures who aren't used to that, they feel it too. Mm-hmm. They know your sincerity. They know you're true. And uh, this is, I, I'm, I'm so glad you came on the show. I'm so, it's, it's exciting. Tell us more. <laughs> we, all, we, have a, we, have, uh, we have time to keep going. And so, um, but... You, you came all the way here to West Texas. Obviously, 
the Lord wants your message to be heard. Um, you said yes, like you have been training yourself to do and hearing and doing. Um, there's, there's something else. Like, there, tell me one more thing what the Lord's doing. I don't, tell us about your, your, some of your recent books that you're, you're, you're writing and your podcast and, and tell the audience how, how they can get in touch with you as well. Um, and, uh, uh, and everybody listening, please uh, write this down, get your pen, however it is that you memorize it, get it, get it, and, 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 and make sure that you support this ministry. Oh, thank you so much. It's an honor to be here with you guys. Yeah. Yes. Really. Um, well, if anyone is interested in like really this whole topic that we've been talking about here today, uh, I wrote a book. It's called Reigniting Spirit and Truth. Amen. And this book, uh, you can get a paperback, ebook. You can listen to it as an audiobook or free PDF. Download it. It's we wanted to go out. And you know, this book, we we're, we I divided the book in two: worship and truth, and worship and spirit. So by the end of it all, you know, I think that no matter who you are, what denomination you come up from or your background, like there's going to be something for you that's going to really be a blessing to learn, whether it's to walk in the truth in a deeper way uh, or the Holy Spirit. And if you want to visit our website, you can go to riseonfire.com or you can watch our YouTube teachings at riseonfire at YouTube. You can just search it right there. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we got to get a copy of the book. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> to, and then we'll, we'll probably have to send it to you to get a signed one. <laughs> and then you can send it back. But uh, this has been, it's been so special uh, to have you. May the Father just continue to bless you. And may, uh, may all those who come into contact with your ministry, may they all just come away with a, a deeper understanding of what the Spirit and the power of the Spirit and that this power of the Spirit didn't stop. And that it's not just stopped, it's, it's, it's more so even today. He said that he will do all these things that I've done and more, uh, which, which, which is crazy to think. We think that, that, you know, who can do greater than Mashiach? Uh, but all his bride, when we are yielding to his spirit, empowered by his spirit and his word, uh, if you can imagine... A husband wants to bless his bride uh, and, and give her not only what he has, but everything that she deserves and, and more, right? She wants that for his bride, which is us. And no matter, it, it, he, yeah, I don't know. she is adorned with so much. And if we can live and operate and pray in that truth, understanding who we are, Right, uh, I, I, you're you're a superhero. <laughs> like I don't know, do you know what I mean? It's like uh, our kids, uh, my kids, like watching. Where, comic. Do they, where do they get that? Where does Marvel get that idea? Right. Um, yes. Right. Uh, ultimately, that is a worldly um, perspective. Uh -huh. That's right. That is uh -huh. really going after that bizarre in each of yes. each human being to walk as he walked, which he did the impossible. Amen. And we know our Messiah is returning, our bridegroom is returning, looking for an equally yoked bride, a bride who is walking as he walked. Mm -hmm. And so in, as we've been talking about, in the truth, in obedience to his Father's commandments, mm -hmm. and then also walking in the Holy Spirit, bringing freedom. As we know in Luke 4, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to bring freedom, to set the captives free. Amen. Are we also doing that? Are we becoming an equally yoked bride? Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you everyone for this, uh, for tuning in to GLC and this uh, episode of the Light of the Southwest. Uh, you are, uh, we, we wouldn't be here without you. And we look forward to seeing you again on the next show. And uh, Holly, was there any last words? Thank you all so much for tuning in and for having open hearts and open ears to what the Father wants to pour into your life. You are a special called out people set apart for such a time as this. Open up the word, connect to the Father in prayer. And just like they said, receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Receive the gifts and be the beautiful adorned bride, chaste, pure, holy, ready for the return 
of our bridegroom, Yeshua HaMashiach. We love you all. We're so blessed to be a part of this beautiful family. Thank you for joining us on Light of the Southwest. Thank you so much. Thank you. We are so blessed to have you. Amen. Bye. Shalom. 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 Thank you. <laughs>